Hello everyone and welcome back to another My Time at Porsche Guy. Before I left for my little hiatus from the streaming, one of my regulars on the stream requested a guide on the animals in Porsche, so that's what we're going to cover today. Now, your animals kind of fall into basically three categories. We'll call them your livestock, your mounts, and your pets. Now, livestock, you have to buy either the shed, sometimes called the barn, or a coop from Albert's store. And then you can get, respectively, the lambs or calves for the shed, or the chicks or ducklings for the coop, which you can see I still have them as the babies, and they do grow up. Now, livestock are not essential. There's, there's nothing you're going to gain from them that you can't gain elsewhere in the game. Um, but they're, 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 they're a convenience factor. So, for example, once you raise your uh, cows and sheep to full grown, they'll give you milk, colored fur, or worn fur every day. You can see I've just gathered all those. Milk, colorful fur. Each of them gave colorful fur. The two cows gave milk, and the, the four sheep gave the worn fur. And they'll also give you feces every day. And with the coop, it's they, they both give the same things. It's going to be eggs every day, and occasionally they'll give you tail feathers, which are the same feathers that you get from nests, from cutting down trees and the like, and so on. So, that's the basics of what they're going to give you. But, things to know is, first off, you got to feed them. So you come over to your trough here, and you can feed, see what growth points are. That's going to be basically how what percentage they're going to grow until they're old enough that they actually grow up. So like if I wanted to put a bunch of apples in here, they would grow faster up until about 120%. So my chicks here, I've only got plant fiber that I put in there, so we'll put a bunch of that in there. And they'll all grow a percentage growth. It's not a, a proper 15%, but then you also got to you know pet them, make them happy, and they'll help them grow faster. And, you know, after a week or two, or, you know, however long it takes, depending on what food you put in and whatnot, they'll be full grown. And, you know, it helps if you clean up the feces that's in their pen, which these guys don't have today. Actually, no, they're just, it's just really small. They'll grow a little faster if you do that. And so they'll grow, and then they'll start giving you daily stuff. You still have to feed them to get daily goods. You know, petting them, you can see the 120%, 100%. 16%-ish. Once they basically break that 100 and, you know, 5, 110, whatever percentage. The wiki says 120%, but you can see these guys are full grown at 116. Or 121. So it'll vary from animal to animal. And that's the livestock thing. You know, you have to buy your shed or your coop at uh, A and G. And you can probably upgrade it there. You can have at most 12 animals per thing. So I could theoretically get two more sheep and four more cows for this one. And same here, I could do six and six on, on the chicks and ducklings. Which again, there's no difference other than aesthetics for them or how much you want to sell them for. Because you can, once they're full grown, sell them for profit. You won't get a profit if you sell them while they're still, you know, babies. Your second category, which is going to require the stable, is your mounts. Now, there are effectively five types of mounts, which can be split into horses and llamas. So, you can own four types, and the, the fifth one is a rental. And we'll talk about acquiring everything later. But, it works very similar to here. You have, you know, I can go here in the feed and get them to feed, or I can go to here in the stable and get the stats. And you can see right now, not very happy with me, not very loyal, because I haven't been petting them lately. Or, you know, you know, feeding. So what these stats are, you know, they'll start at a lower and then these they'll max out as they go. Um, your colorful llama and your brown horse are roughly equivalent across the board. It's just a matter of how you acquire them is what difference. 
And then your higher tier ones are the Cotton Llama, which is that big white one with the sunglasses, or a white horse that you can buy. And they're roughly similar, but they're slightly different. The horse is a little bit faster, the Llama re recovers endurance faster, and so on. So, but those, they're not too wildly different. So if you just have a ton of money and you want to go for, you know, not have to deal with it, you can buy the horses, llamas you have to catch. But you can train them, which right now I don't have anything I can train. But speed is how fast they run. Endurance is how, you know, just like when you run and sprint, you have the endurance bar that goes down. Same with them. If you try to sprint with them, they'll lose that. So this is how fast they regain it. And then these two, the Jump Endurance and Dash Endurance Utilization is how much endurance they use for jumping or dashing and so on. And then finally, Loyalty is how likely they are to do what you tell them to. So just like uh, with Breath of the Wild, when you, you get a wild horse and it doesn't always listen to you and you got to build up the loyalty with it, you know, that's the thing you got to do. So and one of the things you can do to help build up loyalty and happiness is interact and let's see if it'll let me do this sometimes it won't when i'm in here yep not a suitable place for interaction but you can pet them so i'll try it again from this angle now that you've moved pet and boom you get you know the little hearts there and that'll help increase their loyalty over time and your interactions in this are affected by how many interactions you're allowed to do during the day. So I won't go through my full eight or so, but if you have the... Um, what is it? Intimate interaction perk in a social tree, that's going to increase your interactions with other people, but that includes with your, your mounts. So you can eventually, you know, pet them like eight times a day. And if I did that, you know, I can come in here and see, you see how his mood has improved a little bit. And his loyalty might have gone up a little bit. You know. But you keep doing that and they'll improve their mood. And, you know, have, good mood will improve their loyalty. And so on, keeping them fed. And so on. And finally, pets. There are three pets in the game. Two you can acquire on your own. The third is through marriage. So, looking in our relationships. If you marry Gust, you get QQ, his pet pig, as part of your family. The other two that you can adopt are Scraps and Pinky. Once you get them up to, I think it's two stars, it might be three, you can buy a collar for them from Mysterious Salesman, who comes in on, I think it's the 27th and 28th of every month. And you can then adopt them and they'll move into your, you know, workshop and do all that. So question is, how do you acquire all these animals? Well, first off, you have to have the respective buildings, you know, the stable for your mounts, the shed or coop for livestock. And most of them, you're just going to come over here to McDonald's farm to buy them. But for the llamas, you may have noticed, and we saw it actually here in the background, this little thing here that says insufficient items. This is for capturing your llamas. You'll have, as you progress the story, you'll unlock a uh, trap box, a basic and advanced trap boxes. Let's see if I can find them over here. Recipes. Furniture. They're either under furniture or... This maybe. Do, do, do. But there we go. Trap boxes. You can build those with some wooden boards and springs. And you'll need this one to get the colorful llama. And you'll fill it with, I think it's uh, lettuce and cumin. Or you can bait it with to get a colorful llama. But then you'll need the advanced trap box later, which requires steel plates, springs, and old parts. And you'll need to trap. Uh, bait it with golden ginseng, which you need to get to, uh, what's it called? Southreach? South Block. You have to buy it from South Block to get that. And that'll get you the, the cotton llama, which is, again, the, the white one, the big white one that shows up with the 
sunglasses and so on. And that'll be, you know, one of your two best mounts. It depends on if you prefer speed over uh, endurance usage or recovery. And then you can also buy, from here, you can go to McD's Stable. You can buy horses or rent. The rental is the one that you can have. You do not need a stable for this. You pay the 500 goals for it for seven days. And it'll do its thing, but you can buy the brown one here or the white one. And you can see the difference in their stats. The white one is the better one. And as you can see, you know, they start the lower here, but as you train them up, you know, it goes from 8.5 down to 5, 11.4 to 9 on your, how, you know, what your utilization is. So the cost, you know, it's, it's really going to be what do you care more about, the money or whatever, because you can buy these, they're permanent. And they're good, but it's also cheaper to get the llamas, but it's not always guaranteed to get the llamas, and you have to work for it, and so on. As for the other livestock, you just buy them as babies right over here from Vic D's Jumping Livestock. You know, chicks and ducklings are 97 goals each. The lambs are 156, and the cows are 195. And despite the fact that he sells beef and chicken... There is not, you can't like butcher these to get beef and chicken meat from them. So, like I said, the, there's the only difference between the chicken and the duckling is the aesthetics. Um, I don't think off the top of my head that they even sell for slightly more. I could be wrong. Maybe the duckling sells for a little bit more than the chick. You know, just like the calf will sell, the cow will sell for more than the sheep once they're full grown. But that is it. And that is all of the animals for this guy. Um, we're going to look very briefly at Sandrock, I think, next week. I haven't gotten to the point that I can demonstrate them as well, so I might not cover it. But look forward to what we have going on next week. Let me know in the comments section what you guys want to see more guides of for Sandrock and Porsche, or if you want to see guides for other related games in the you know, farming, life sim, RPG, hybrid genres. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know that you enjoy this content. I'll see you guys next time. See ya!